Pizza, pizza, can I take your order? Hi, can I get a large Hawaiian pizza? A large Hawaiian, okay. Will there be anything else for you? No, that's everything for me today, thank you. Okay, and is that for pickup or delivery? Yes, that's for pickup. For pickup. Okay, that should be ready in about 35 minutes. Perfect. Okay, and who is this? This is Brandon. And this is Kyle. And we are your guide to friends. <laughs> All right, let's eat this pizza. So welcome to the podcast. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for listening and following us on social media so far. We've got a pretty good response. And for sending in questions as well. That's very helpful. Uh, we had some feedback so far on the first couple episodes. Uh, we have heard that we have similar voices. Yes, that's true. Which was very surprising for both of us. I think. Yes, I was also very surprised. I don't think our voices are similar at all. Me neither. I know. I like my voice is not that annoying, so I. I oh that wow! Was weird. Uh, Punches <laughs> have been thrown. Yep. Uh, we also got the comment that our voices are very soothing. Oh, I haven't got that. That's just you, maybe. Maybe just me. Maybe my voice is particularly soothing. <laughs> So to try to fix that a little bit on YouTube, you might have noticed that we have some animation on the sides of when we are speaking. So hopefully that'll help you distinguish which one of us is talking. Right. Hopefully that should be okay then. Uh, in any case, let's get this podcast going. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was going to use some expression, but I couldn't find anything. All right, so we'll start Let's with... Let's get uh, ready to rumble! <laughs> okay. <laughs> start wrestling now? <laughs> All right, so Brandon, let's start us off with a Q&A. Okay, so one of my students in Japan, Haruka, asked how to improve her English speaking skill in general. Mm -hmm. Do you have a tip? Let's just throw a couple tips out there for her and everybody else. Uh, the, the best advice I have for improving speaking skill is to speak as much as you can. I think most people get too shy. They're afraid of making mistakes. And then they only like speak when they are confident that they're correct. Yeah, I and, agree. I mean... That was what I was doing when I was learning Japanese. Me too. Also. And I think it really made my learning go pretty slowly. So uh, so I think just speak. Don't, afraid, don't be afraid of being wrong because you're going to be wrong. You're going to make mistakes. But that's how you will learn what is correct. So uh, that's probably the, the biggest thing from in my perspective yeah. yeah what do you think i totally agree and so i'm curious was there a moment when you realized that's what you're doing and decided to change um <clears throat> i think the moment was when i i arrived in japan and i'm like crap i can't really communicate with people oh okay because in, in in canada like i was just in japanese class and Everyone was speaking a little bit here and there, but I, I couldn't respond because the conversation would already be past the topic. Oh, I remember that, yeah. So, yeah. So when I came to Japan and I was like, this is not working, <laughs> and I was like, I have no choice but to start just speaking, uh, even if I even if I look silly. Or... Like kind of sink or swim, jump in the deep end. Yeah, trial by fire. Just got to go for it and then 
Yeah, because I mean, there's there's been some friends of ours uh, who have come to Vancouver, and their English was kind of, uh, I mean, to put it in like a slightly negative way, it was kind of like all over the place, kind of disorganized, <laughs> just like talk, 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 talk. But that was what sh- she was like at first. But I think because she spoke so much without worrying about being wrong. She improved so much more quickly than yeah. other people. Uh, you that might even so know true. who I'm talking about. but I know a couple people that are like that. I don't know who specifically you're talking about. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but yeah, so that's what I definitely recommend. Yeah. Um, another way that might help you with this. So I have I had a moment when I was in Japan where I realized what I was doing and kind of how to fix it. So let me kind of start this by saying I do not condone drinking all the time, but (laughs) it was actually one night I had gone out drinking with my friends when I was in Japan. So I'd never actually gone to school and studied Japanese, but I went out and had some beer and I realized that Japanese was much easier when I was drinking. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying you should drink, but with that knowledge in mind, the next day I realized that if I could drink and speak Japanese, then I could probably not drink and speak Japanese as well. And so it kind of was a turning point in my Japanese education, I guess you could say. Yeah, I, I can relate to that. I understand. That's, you know, when I'm drinking in so that kind of environment, then it's yeah. much easier to speak probably because you care less about screwing right. up and definitely and you feel more of a motivation to maybe connect with people i sure. think i'm more confident you're not going to remember mm-hmm. anything when you, so don't study when you're drinking and if you're underage do not Speak drink period <laughs> but yeah so anyway how to go that's what we recommend we both agree speak mm-hmm. as much as you can yeah make lots of mistakes yep and anyway, you make mistakes, they turn into funny stories. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, what's question number two, Brandon? Uh, so here we have a grammar question. The difference between the and a, uh, or the oh, okay. and a. I've got a very easy answer for you. All, All right, right let's hear it. Sure. Uh, I don't have a very easy answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, I guess like, the main rule, if there's any rule really, is a or a uh, for general cases uh, where you haven't introduced mm, the what topic. word you're talking about. Yeah, the topic. Yeah. Uh, and the is more for definite or specific cases where you might have introduced the topic or, for example, if your hometown only has one movie theater, mm-hmm. then it makes sense to say, I went to the theater. Because in that case, everyone already knows yeah. which theater. So, so there's also that kind of rule as well. I have a non-grammar rule that works for 85% of the situations. Let's do it. Um, when you're saying a, uh, you should always think a uh, is one of many. And when you're thinking the, if you want to say the word the, the person listening to you should know what you're talking about. Right, right. That's an easy non-grammar way to remember these two words. It's not always correct, but if you say the, the person that's listening to you should already know what the topic is. So going back to your movie theater situation, there's only one movie theater in the town and you say the movie theater. Everybody knows which one it is, so it's easy. Right. That's my quick recommendation. So that question comes from Nana or Nana. <laughs> Say with Nana the... or Nana. Well, I said Nana. It's kind of a uh, terrible English pronunciation of her yeah. name. Yeah. So here's here's a couple example sentences. So I need a phone. So in this case. It's not any particular phone. I just need 
some phone. なんでもいいけど、I need a phone. Probably Kyle's、uh, phone is broken and needs to use somebody else's. Yeah, I need a phone. Give me that phone. <laughs>、uh, or Mark wants a bicycle. Because Mark、He's, doesn't have a bicycle. He doesn't care which、exactly. one he is. Uh huh. So <laughs> if you, you have Mark, these examples prepared before I told you what. Oh, I told you earlier, didn't I? Yeah. See, you、I、sneaky did, I did, bastard. I did my homework. What are you talking about? <laughs> I thought you were just making examples on the fly here. No, I would, but. Uh, or, uh, I have a cat. Because you don't know if I have a cat or not, right? That's true. So, I, ha- I have a cat. The cat is black. Right. Was it the I cat have... I saw last time? No, it's a different cat. <laughs> okay. It's like, what are you talking about? I don't have a cat. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> okay.、Uh, and so, especially if you're explaining or describing which thing you're talking about, right? Then, those cases, we definitely use the. So, as an example of that, can you give me the book on the table? Oh, must be the one that's on the table. Exactly. Or, And likely only one of them, right? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah.、Uh, he didn't like the movie that you recommended. I didn't like the movie that you decided that we watched together, The Fifth Wave. Right. That was terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so,、uh, but yeah, I think in general for Japanese people, The and、uh, will probably be slightly confusing <laughs> your whole life.、Uh, shut up, Brandon. <laughs>、uh, but just with these rules, try your best. And the more you use it and the more you hear it, you'll have a feel for it little by little. so Yeah, actually, so talking about going back to speaking, speak as much as possible for this. When you're listening, you should actively listen, which means pay attention when you hear the and a and which situations you heard them in. And you'll slowly realize or figure out when we use them and when we don't. Right, exactly. Okay, so、uh, let's move on to our observations segment. Okay. All right, you want to start us off, Brandon? I feel like I'm starting off everything today. Okay, well, okay. let me start off, okay? Because you're being kind of mendokusai right now, all right? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, all right, all right, let's hear it, Kyle. My observation is about the word mendokusai. Oh, really? How... Yes, yes. Who might this? That was pretty、uh, good. So,、uh, <laughs> so, in Japan, people love the word mendokusai.、Uh, and when they will. Look it up in the dictionary. Very commonly, troublesome comes、yeah. up.、Um, I, I mean, some people might use this word sometimes. Personally, I never use the word troublesome. Me neither. Right. So、um, I would recommend not using this word so much. If you want to, people will understand. But Uh, what I would recommend is, for example,、uh, cleaning up is such a pain. Yes. So something is a pain. Yeah.、Um, let's say,、uh, and I mean, normally when we're with friends speaking casually, the phrase is a little different. So,、um, I have to do a lot of gathering of documents for my new visa. It's such a pain in the ass. Yeah. Kids don't eat a me, did I not? We always insert some kind of random body part. Yeah. So, pain in the ass is probably most common with friends, but you、yep. shouldn't say that with people you don't know because it's slightly rude, maybe. Um, yeah, but you could say,、work. right, not at work,、uh, not with your b- 
boss for sure. Yes. Um, you could say it's a pain in the neck. Yep. It's kind of a family friendly version. Uh, or simply it's such a pain. Or if it's chotto mendoksakatara, it's kind of a pain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not such a big deal, but it's kind of a pain, is also common. And some other、uh, body parts could be pain in the back, pain in the、what? butt. Oh, pain in the butt. Pain in the、yeah. back, I've never heard before. Really? Have you, heard, have you said that? I have said that. Okay, you're a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so that's one thing I noticed that people have tr- trouble、uh, finding the right English for. Yeah. So、uh, yeah, so it's such a pain. That's what I would recommend to you. Such a pain. Yeah, it's a good go to expression.、Yeah. All right. So, what is your observation, Brandon? Okay, so this is actually a, kind of an advanced speaking technique, I guess it would be.、Um, it's related to Japanese speakers, and what I notice as an English speaker, some people do. And it's to draw out the final S in su, which doesn't have a final S, but the S in su on words like desu, itadakimasu. So nobody really talks that way, but. Um, like itadakimas is a normal way to say it, but some people, especially younger people and especially males, I've n o t i c e d say itadakimas or erigato gozaimas. And this long S is kind of strange for us because in English, this like erigato gozaimas is masu, has an SU on it.、Uh, yeah, it's a very interesting difference between English and Japanese. What is that difference, Kyle? Say what? What is the difference between English and Japanese with the、uh, syllables? Oh, so you're, you're saying in Japanese, almost every syllable will end with a consonant sound. Is that what you're saying? Vowel sound.、Uh, sorry, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys.、Uh, <laughs> that's right. Right, right, right. Ends with a vowel. Except for n,、mm, right. but everything else, right. Whereas in English, it could end in anything. Right.、Mm-hmm. So, yeah, actually, this syllable thing, we're not going to get into it today. We might make a lesson in the future, but syllables is kind of the building blocks of English. And it is of Japanese, but the Japanese letters and syllables are matched together. In English, they're not. So maybe somebody right, will talk about syllables. The letter is a syllable in Japanese, usually. Right. English is not so simple. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But have you noticed that, Kyle? Do you have any friends that draw out their S's for extended periods of time?、Uh, not, I don't notice it too much. I mean, like, I notice a lot of people, like, guys especially, would be like, us, or like, yeah, yeah. just. So I don't know.、Uh, I, I, it doesn't sound good to me, but I mean, it's not my language, so I can't really judge.、Uh, but. But one, one thing I did notice was, or like, not about s or anything, but the end sounds of some words,、uh, like、uh, salad, for example. Oh, yeah. It ends up being sarada. Yeah.、Uh, or, strangely,、uh, there's some overcorrection for some English words. Yeah. Like, Canada, not Canada, sorry, Toronto. Toronto, yes. Well, first of all, Toronto, we don't say Toronto. Toronto. We say like Toronto. Yeah.、Um, but so many of my students say Tront. Me, I, I hear that as well, Tront. They take off the vowel at the end, which is even,、uh, even weirder than that. is I've heard Japanese people say Kyot. Kyot? Kyot. Instead of Kyoto? <laughs> Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, that's the weirdest thing.、Um, but yeah. Have you noticed any other ones like that? Or?、Uh, yeah. One other word that I hear in the summertime, which is coming up soon, is mosquito. Often I hear mesquite.、Mm, and、right. mesquite 
is a type of word. wood. Yeah. Mosquito is a bug that you don't want close to you. Mosquito is mm -hmm. a very nice smelling wood that you smoke foods with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mosquitoes bug me. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. It's not a joke. It's just, just real, dude. Mushishte. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> wow, you're you're getting better at this, Brandon. Okay. Uh, Stupid well, English puns and bad Japanese jokes. On, on the on the subject of bugs, uh, I'd like to move into our, our next segment here. Okay. Uh, the topic of this segment is pet peeves. Do you know what pet peeves are, Brandon? Yeah, I've heard that before. Okay, so, uh, pet peeves, if you don't know, are certain things that are annoying to you, that bother you, irritate you, bug you, and they're kind of particular to you, specifically. And so often example, they're minor mm, details, right? Could be minor things, yeah. Where so, for example, there's, uh, for me, it bothers me when, uh, <laughs> uh, when people ride their bike on the sidewalk section. Oh, when, yeah. Okay. When there's a bike lane on the sidewalk. Oh, okay. But they don't ride there. They ride in the sidewalk, and that really bugs me, because it, you know, if everyone just rode in the bike lane people would like there'd be less accidents or like less things like that it's just dangerous mm -hmm. so it really bugs me when people do that but for other people they don't care at all yeah it doesn't bug them so for, that's a pet peeve of mine it's kind of particular to me do you have any pet peeves brandon all right, uh, not, not even not even do you have any it's like what are what are your, your pet, pet peeves? peeves yeah everybody has some yeah it's hard to come up kind of in the heat of the moment but um <laughs> so much heat here <laughs> the first one i thought of was people that chew with their mouth open and some yeah. foods like ramen like slurping actually I, it was kind of a pet peeve for me at the beginning but i've really gotten used to that i do right, it as well right yeah but, when, um, when when i first when i first started eating noodles i yeah. couldn't make any noise because mm, so in canada hot. it's 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 rude to make any noise when you're eating yeah so even s noodles eating noodles then i would just eat it very politely like i mean <laughs> <laughs> quietly yeah. <laughs> yeah but uh but now i've finally been able to do a little slurping I like the word slurp. It sounds like what you're doing. I, I do like the word slurp. So uh, especially like eating with your mouth open, I, I've kind of gotten used to it a little bit, but not a huge fan. But one thing I just can't forgive is chewing gum with your mouth open. Does it make gum taste better? I don't know. Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> just ASMR right now. So I grew up with dogs. I've always had dogs in my home. Did they and, chew with their mouth open? Yeah, so people chewing gum with their mouth open reminds me of my dogs drinking water as if I have my head right beside their face. And like, I don't know. I feel like we've gone past that and we've become humans. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's a reason. If somebody wants to prove me wrong, if there's a reason chewing gum with your mouth open is good, please let me know. I am genuinely curious. Yeah, well, chewing gum or chewing food both are pretty gross to me yeah in canada that's not common at all very kind of frowned upon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, yeah but sometimes i just i don't know what to do in that situation just leave the restaurant yeah in a restaurant i don't know what to do mm -hmm. i'm on the sky train it happens often when i'm on the sky train i just switch trains usually ah because it's gum right yeah yeah the next station i just move to a different drain or change seats just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you have any other pet peeves Kyle yeah uh, another pet peeve of mine is when I'm with somebody when we go out to a bar or a restaurant or something 
and they're constantly checking their phone. Mm. Uh, I mean, if it's every once in a while, if they're just double checking, putting it back down, that's fine. I don't care. But if they're like listening to you while looking at your phone, that's oh, pretty yeah. rude. So that's one of my pet peeves. Like texting? Yeah, texting while someone's talking to you. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I guess you can't see my hands right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it's, that's, it's kind of a pet peeve for me. I don't usually have a problem with that, but I usually feel more like sad when I see other people, especially at a restaurant, if people are on a date, like mm -hmm. a boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband, wife, and they're both on their phones. Mm -hmm. I wonder why are you here? Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, I, I see that a lot recently where it's just a couple both at a coffee shop and both just staring into their phone, not talking. And yeah, it's so yeah, sad. Yeah, it does feel kind of like sad. Right? All right, let's get off this sad topic. Yeah, let's, let's do something happy. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's uh, go to a Q&A. That's always happy. Okay. All right. So you got a question number three for us, Brandon? Uh, yeah, this comes from Sakura, who is staying here in Vancouver, and she asked how to kind of manage stress when you're in an English-speaking environment, so like a meeting, for example, with all English speakers, and you're the only Japanese speaker, mm -hmm. how to kind of get your point out, how to talk, how to infiltrate the conversation. Mm -hmm. So how would you do that, Brandon? Oh, I was going to pass it over to you, but I guess I'll go. Um, so actually you brought it up earlier that you had trouble at the beginning kind of expressing yourself and worrying about making mistakes. I think it's the same thing. If mm -hmm. you want to talk, mm -hmm. just talk. So our culture is very different. We talk over each other often in Japanese culture. People don't do that very often. But if you have something to say, just say it. Right, right. Yeah, I think even as a native speaker myself, I did have trouble talking over people mm. which if you don't know what that means if i'm talking and then brandon just starts talking kind of at the end of what i'm saying yeah kind of interrupting what i'm saying that is talking over somebody uh so yeah i've always hated that i don't like to do it so i just kind of wait quietly and then other friends end up talking over each other so I can never get into the conversation. Okay. So, yeah. That's kind of a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> oh, interesting. Unfortunately, uh, it's kind of a skill you have to learn to get into conversations often. Yeah, if you're in if you're in Canada or America, then Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like you said, just kind of getting used to it and then just trying to to deal with it. I mean, I don't think there's any uh, the, the only thing I would do is just drink. I mean, <laughs> not, in drink. Class, not in class. But. Um, so a tip for, I guess, talking over people without being rude about it is as somebody's finishing their point, you always know in English when people are coming to the end of their sentence, unless they're really good speakers. But normally, you know, they're coming up to the end of their sentence. So as they're saying the last couple words, just agree with them and then continue talking. Oh, that's right, but, or, oh, that's right. Yeah, I think so too, because, and talk over them as they're speaking. So talk mm -hmm. at the same time for the last couple words, mm -hmm. plus maybe two. Right, right. Yeah, one, one thing also kind of like that is like when you kind of hear they're coming to an end, yep. say the first one or two words and then stop. And then that way they know you want to say something. That works as well. So sometimes they will, oh, okay, they want to say something. Let me finish. Okay. And then they'll wait for you to speak again. So that's one thing you could try. But um, Another tip, if you're in a group conversation in school and you have to talk and you just feel like you can't get in there and you're not getting high marks because of that, which happens, uh, something you could actually do that's not very rude is actually interrupt people with something like wait or just a second or... Did you mean, so especially a word like wait, people will all stop. Mm -hmm, you say, wait, true. did you mean this? And then now you're speaking, right? So it's mm -hmm. not rude. You are interrupting, mm -hmm. but it's not rude. You're clarifying. That's okay. 
Otherwise, right. your opportunity to clarify is going to be gone. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's an important point. Because I think for us, if we're in a conversation, a group discussion, we just assume he didn't say anything. So mm. he must understand what we're talking about. Yeah. Even Even in a situation where it's one-on-one -on -one conversation or in a small group, that's one thing I find Japanese people don't do. They, they're so good at aizuchi that mm. <laughs> you're talking, talking, talking. They keep nodding their head. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you understand? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So it's important in Canada to, if you don't understand or if you're not sure, tell them right away. And yeah. uh, people are fine explaining or yeah yeah they're not going to be annoyed so and if they are annoyed they're not your friend exactly <laughs> all right <laughs> okay and so our last question of the q a is from our mutual friend taka uh he's a funny guy and he decided to ask uh what is the actual question brandon uh, who did the drawing? Who did asked. the drawing? So the the drawing he is referring to is the graphic or the picture of me and Brandon as cartoon characters, basically. So, yeah. uh, but we're kind of using as mascots for our podcast. Exactly. And so, that was an example of talking over. Just so you guys know, stop talking over me, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. Give me a break. <laughs> Okay, so I will answer this one. Uh, okay. So my sister-in-law, my brother's wife, uh, she loves the app Snapchat. And so she, when I was back home in Canada for Christmas, she made me download Snapchat. Uh, and so Snapchat is an app where you can send pictures or little videos or very short messages and they disappear after you see them twice or, or I think it's one time uh, I think it's twice uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> from my experience it's I can see it <laughs> twice and then it disappears um, or within like 24 hours or something but anyway in that application you can choose your own avatar, your own character. And so she chose one for me. And you can also use the Bitmoji app. Because uh, that is the app that is, or that's the function within Snapchat that is making yeah. it. And you can also do kind of, what, what's the right word? Like duo or tandem? Uh, like, like to put the two people together? Right, 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 right. You can like oh. link link it with your friend's account so it shows oh, both yeah, that's of you right, yeah. together in it. And so we both made avatars and there's an endless amount of possible ones to use. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a bit of fun. Uh, so I recommend everybody get either Snapchat or Bitmoji and make yourself into a cartoon character. And actually, I on right now, on right now, right what? now, I only have two friends on Snapchat. I have right. Kyle and my friend Sherry. And so maybe we'll throw up our Snapchats for everybody to add us and sure. Snapchat each other. That would be fun. It's, yeah, it could be kind of fun. Yeah, I'm also lonely on Snapchat. So, you have more than two friends. I've got three. <laughs> oh, it's thirty percent more than me. I've got my brother, my brother's wife, and my friend Mason. Shout out to Mason. Oh, and me. So that's four. Oh damn, I was wrong. Four. Holy crap! It's double. Niki Mona. Yeah, <laughs> Mister Popular. Mister Popular. So can you guys please help us be less unpopular and add us on Snapchat? Please, please. <laughs> so lonely. 
All right. Well, it's sad, but it's time for us to leave. Yeah. We'll see you again next time. Uh, the That's question sure. that we'd like to ask you today is what is your pet peeve? What is annoying for you? What bugs you? So please let us know on our Instagram account. All right. All right. You can comment on YouTube as well if you're watching this. Yeah, YouTube, Instagram. Let us know on Snapchat. That's true, yeah. <laughs> All righty. Anything else, okay. Brandon? No, that's everything for me. All right. Hasta la vista. See you next time. Bye. Adios. All right, round two. Make me, make me. <laughs> Stop that shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>